Welcome, uh, believe you well, and that God has watched over you, kept you, and that you have been able to engage and do the many activities that you've done during the day. I want to welcome you to our show today, Commonwealth. I'm, I'm, I'm your host today, uh, Pastor Kelvin, and uh, this is a show that we usually talk about money matters and faith, uh, just trying to connect the two and, and, and just uh, engage, look into scripture, look into the marketplace, and try and find our standing point so that you're able to be more productive in the things and matters of the kingdom. So today I have a very amazing guest who is here with us today. So I just want to give him a few minutes just to introduce himself and maybe tell us who he is, what he does, and uh, just continue. Okay. Thank you so much for inviting me for the show. Yeah. I'm grateful. I appreciate the opportunity to come and share. You're welcome. Uh, with us on this platform today. Yeah. My name is Pastor Chelson Vidolo. I am minister at Kitengela uh, with the New Birth Covenant Church. And uh, I'm also a professional banker, uh, currently working also in the marketplace as a banker. And uh, I believe even as we continue to share on this platform, we'll be able to glean one or two wisdom that will help us in our day-to-day -day operations, uh, living uh, in this world today, even with the challenges we have uh, currently in the world, I believe as we continue sharpening one another, mm -hmm. we'll be able to add value to each other yeah. and become better, even addressing the issues that we have at hand. Okay. So thank you so much for the invite. Wow, you're welcome. You're welcome, Pastor Chilson. Just to just go deep in uh, right away. Yeah. Uh, so. How, are you, how do you manage the two? Because now you're a pastor, you're a banker. And uh, I thought if you're just in ministry, you should not be in other things. How do you manage the two? And what made you do that? Yeah. Well, I believe uh, in the principle of work. Yeah. That's the principle that guides me mm -hmm. in terms of uh, uh, what I do. Mm -hmm. So I look at ministry as working mm -hmm. for God with God, mm -hmm. and then I look at my service in my professional area still as a ministry. Mm -hmm. So the two to me is ministry. Okay. So I'm not separating my marketplace endeavors mm -hmm. and my serving God oh. spiritually. Mm -hmm. I'm not separating the two. Okay. I am one person mm -hmm. getting involved in both of the two. Both of the and two. And my approach to them is work mm -hmm. for the glory of God. Wow, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think here and uh, because what I've heard before is uh, I know people who have maybe engaged more in ministry yeah. and they say that uh, you cannot really be more effective in ministry if you're in if you are in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. And you'll find that uh, maybe in like a ministry, you'll find the, the president pastor, or maybe the senior pastor in the church yeah. is in full time, but the assistant is the one who is only working. So, but for you, you are the senior over yeah. there. And how do you create time? Is it effective? How do you balance the two? Does work eat more of your time? And again, you have a family. Yeah. So how do you balance the three? So if you look at it from the approach of work, yeah. then you have to spread your 24 hours, yeah. your 24 hours to do the work that you have, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So you spread the 24 hours mm -hmm. to do the work that I have, that is ministry mm -hmm. and my day-to-day -day uh, works from so Monday in, to Friday. In that 24 hour, yes. do you have another clock that, we, that is different from the 24 hour that we have? No. Because balancing the three, now yeah. this is you as a pastor, yes. this is you in the marketplace, yeah. this is you and your family, yes. this is you wanting to sleep, this is you wanting to eat. I think the 24 hours are sufficient. Look at How it do you balance way. that? Look at it this way. Mm. Uh, I will be probably in my office mm. from 8 to 5.30 or 6 thereabout. So those, those are 8 hours. Those are 8 hours. Mm -hmm. You still have 24 minus 8. So that comes to 12. 12 hours. Yeah. So you still have the other uh, 12 hours to do a, no, all the other 12, 4, 14. Mm -hmm. uh, the other work that is remaining. So it's 14 hours, yeah. So those, that is enough time 
to really add value mm -hmm. to another, uh, to the remaining scope of uh, ministry that is work, mm -hmm. I mean the um, uh, church ministry in that matter. So I put in uh, what we would call focused energy uh -huh. and concentrated energy on the item that I'm handling at that time. At the moment. So that okay. you are not uh, mixed up yes. in your approach to issues. Because the reason why it may become a bit tricky mm -hmm. is if you're mixing your focus yeah. or you're lacking focus uh, in terms of approaching the, uh, the work that you're doing. Yeah. So when I am focusing on my office work, mm -hmm. I put my energy within the hours that I have. Yes. And then when it comes to ministry again, mm -hmm. I put in my focus in ministry. Then I get maximum output yes. from both of uh, the issues. And then within the family environment, mm -hmm. I still have time to be at home yes. and then uh, be with my family. Wow. So I think uh, one of the things I've learned is uh, don't t do too many things. Yes. Do few mm -hmm. with a lot of focus, mm -hmm. and then you are able to get maximum, maximum results output. out of the few that you do mm -hmm. with focus. With focus. Yeah. Wow. So uh, how long have you been in banking? Well, I started uh, uh, in 2003. Wow. May. That's quite some time. That makes how many years? Uh, approximately 15 there about. 15? Yes. So the, the banking came, came first before ministry or which one came first? You being in ministry and banking later, which one came first? I'm not sure I would say which came first, yeah. but uh, all through my life, I, I got born again quite at my, an early age Yes. Uh, when I was just uh, joining, I think, secondary school. Yes. So in the process of uh, growing up, mm -hmm. you have your career desires, yes. you're pursuing your school. Mm -hmm. And then while we were still in school, we were doing ministry also in school at that level. Okay. Like we were in Christian Union in school, mm -hmm. finished uh, secondary school, we came into college. Mm -hmm. While we were in college, we again continued to do mm -hmm. our studies yes. uh, hand in hand with the now the Christian Union at the level of the college. Mm -hmm. And we, uh, with other brothers, of course, and sisters, in, we were able to do a, uh, great work yes. during our college days. So I would say that um, it's been an ongoing an process ongoing thing, at yeah. every level and stage mm -hmm. of my life. Yes. So I wouldn't apportion exact time when I would say, now I'm starting ministry. Uh, mm -hmm. But over time, it's been something that has been uh, developing okay. throughout my life, throughout from life. my earliest years of life mm -hmm. up to where we are now. Okay. Yes. At least you've gotten to really like get a bit of your background and, yes. and, 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 and how you've been able to balance the two business exactly. and... and, and just marketplace and, and ministry. Exactly. Now, our subject today is faith and money. Got it. And um, there's a tricky thing here. Yes. And I think we've handled a bit of it, but we want to go more further into it. Where is the place of faith when it comes to business? Because we only associate, most people have really only associated faith mm -hmm. with miracles. Okay. I know money can be an aspect of it, but how do you apply that faith yeah. that you have and get in charge and make it uh, productive in the marketplace. Yeah, I think if you look at what faith life is, if mm. you add the word life to faith, yes. faith is uh, what I would call faith life. Mm. So you live practically yes. your faith. Mm -hmm. The Bible underscores that, that faith without action mm -hmm. is dead. dead. Uh -huh. That means God expects uh, an outcome mm -hmm. of our faith. So generally living mm -hmm. on this earth mm -hmm. requires faith. Yes. And then especially for us who believe in Christ, there is no alternative. There is no two way. You are either living a faith life yes. or not, not a faith life. Mm -hmm. So that means whatever we engage in, requires faith. Mm -hmm. You have to believe that there will be something that will come out. Yes. So in terms of business and faith, mm -hmm. I wouldn't say you can't separate that. Mm -hmm. It is the life. The life itself requires faith. Mm -hmm. 
where uh, there is no productivity in terms of business, yes. then it means your faith is failing. Mm -hmm. Your faith is failing. Mm -hmm. So we need faith uh -huh. in order to produce anything of Thank value, mm -hmm. even in the marketplace. Yes. So ideally for a Christian, you should be operating at a higher level mm. in what you're doing because you have a backing mm -hmm. in what you're doing, unlike mm -hmm. someone else who would be going uh, by using what we'd call luck, mm -hmm. uh, wish, uh, hoping things would work out uh, better. So yes. faith is uh -huh. the thing. So for me, faith mm -hmm. is the life. Is the life. Yes. Okay. Now introducing that. Now yeah. when, how, sorry, like I'm trying to get... Uh, I'm trying to connect the two, yeah. faith and money. Now, when we are talking faith, mm -hmm. uh, because the scripture says, I believe in Hebrews 11, 6, that without faith, you can't please God. Yeah. Uh, so that introduced the, aspects of, the aspect of favor. Yeah. But now, how do you do business by faith? Because I cannot knock on someone's office. Yeah and tell them that I want you to supply certain products to me yeah. by faith. I must put in some money on top of the table or maybe right. a check or something yeah. for him to give me the goods. Yeah. So I'm trying to relate that. I have yeah. faith, yes. but I don't have money. That brings in another angle to business mm. in terms of what even the scripture will, take, will talk about uh, the days of small beginnings. Uh -huh. What would make people say they have faith and they don't have money mm. is because of uh, what I would call an element of spiritualizing reality. Uh -huh. You see, if you want to start a business, you can't start right up there. <laughs> there has the to be a <laughs> beginning be a point. stepping stone somewhere. Exactly. Yes. And clearly, uh, you have to start where you are. Mm -hmm. Even when Abraham is called by God, he's told, lift your eyes mm. from where you are. Mm. Lift your eyes and see from where you are. Uh -huh. So the principle is, where are you? Uh -huh. Then where do you want to, to go? go? So if you want to start a business, uh -huh. there is where you are. Mm -hmm. Then you have to start from where you are, mm -hmm. going to, to where you to want the destination to destination that you want to go. So your faith, mm -hmm is needed mm -hmm. to connect your present mm -hmm. with your destination. Ah, oh, wow. So your faith will... Repeat that again. Uh -huh. Your faith uh -huh. will connect your present yes. with your destination. Wow. Mm -hmm. So when faith connects with your destination, yes. then you have now what the scripture will say, the, con the, the evidence. Mm -hmm. You have a proof mm -hmm. that I will have a bigger business. Yes. But I'm beginning here. Mm -hmm. Maybe we're selling something small yes. with what I have. Mm -hmm. Because there is nobody on earth who doesn't have something mm -hmm. within their reach mm -hmm. that they can do yes. in order to start. to start. So I think we normally suffer from uh, a big, the mentality of starting oh, big. Starting big. And then we miss out on the process mm -hmm. of starting, having to start small. So that calls for patience. Correct. And also, so what happens in the place where... <laughs> You know the prophetic. Yeah. yeah. You're told your kiosk will be a supermarket tomorrow. So how, how do you relate that with someone who it's not bad to expect the supernatural. Yeah. But uh, most people have the prophetic word of them being prophesied to yeah. that something big and greater will happen like tomorrow. Yes. But where they are, the reality of the matter is they might not get there tomorrow. Okay. So how do you convince someone yeah. or how do you make someone understand yeah. that even though they might be having uh, a prophetic word upon their lives yeah. but there is that process of waiting and starting small mm -hmm. and taking baby steps but as long as the clarity of the vision is there yeah. they continue so how do you uh, advise or maybe how do you counsel such a person I think that what comes into play will be the principle of wisdom now. Mm -hmm. Because wisdom now helps you to balance yes. between the prophetic word you have received mm -hmm. and the reality of making that prophetic word mm -hmm. produce the results. Yes. So you'll hear like God would tell the mother of Jesus, Mary, mm. you will have a child. Yes. Then she asks, how shall it be? Then she's told the Holy Ghost will overshadow you. So mm. the word came mm. that he will have a child. Mm -hmm. 
That was divine. It didn't mean that the next day mm -hmm. Mary would have a child. Yes. It had to take the nine months for the child to be born. Wow. So there okay. is that element of being we, realistic, being realistic with the prophetic word that you have received. Otherwise, if you wake up tomorrow and wait for that kiosk to become a supermarket, <laughs> it may never happen till you die. So there has to be the element of, I have to now wait as I work. Mm -hmm. And then you begin to see if it's the baby, it begins to develop in your womb. Mm -hmm. You cannot deliver after three months. Yeah. You have to wait up to the ninth Nine month months. for the full gestation period mm -hmm. to be complete. So the yes. element of being realistic mm -hmm. with the word of God, mm -hmm. putting it into now what we are calling the practice, yes. acting on the prophetic yes. word, mm -hmm. responding to what you've been told mm -hmm. is what will bring results now in the physical, mm -hmm. because the word goes to create in the spiritual, mm -hmm. but the results will be visible mm -hmm. in the physical. Yes. And the physical has elements to do with the time. Mm -hmm. Because in the spiritual, there may not be time, mm -hmm. but in the physical, there's an element of time, mm -hmm. which has to follow mm -hmm. the rules of nature. So if you have been told you'll get a child, yes. it has to take nine months. Mm -hmm. So it obeys the nature, mm -hmm. the natural rules. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Now, people who believe, yeah. uh, I am a believer in prayer. Yes. But people who believe that now prayer, when you pray, then yeah. you have been uh, without having to, to, to really engage and do a lot. Mm -hmm. If you pray, certain things will just come your way. And they substitute hard work with prayer. Not knowing that if they don't do something, if they don't begin small, even if they pray, that will not really be much of effect without undermining prayer. Because there's a place of prayer. But now how do you balance that? Someone who says that they, they have been praying, but they are, they are doing nothing. You see now, you have to draw back to understand why we pray. Mm -hmm. yeah. We pray to kind of engage God, mm -hmm. not really kind of, but to engage God mm -hmm. in what he has said yeah. he will do. Mm -hmm. But God does not do anything on this earth mm -hmm. by himself. True. He does it through someone. Mm -hmm. And so that person is you mm -hmm. who has to take action on what God has to do. Mm -hmm. So prayer will open up mm -hmm. the space within which things must be done. Yes. But those things must be done by someone. By someone. It will not be God doing mm -hmm. himself. Mm -hmm. He can't do it. But in his principles, on this earth, mm -hmm. he does not deal with the, anything outside humanity. Mm -hmm. So he has to use a human being mm -hmm. to do what he has to do mm -hmm. on this earth. Mm -hmm. That is exactly mm -hmm. what, how it works. Mm -hmm. It can't be otherwise. True. Uh, so I heard, I think, uh, it's Bishop Tudor Bismarck, I heard him say one time that uh, prayer is not in the equation of success, but decision is. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time, people will really, really pray, mm -hmm. but they become a bit, uh, they procrastinate a lot when it comes to decision making. And uh, they say, I will do it tomorrow. I will, I will wait and, 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 and do it when I have the time. Or I, I don't want to start in this way. Maybe God is instructing them to start maybe small. So you find people in the space of, it's not that they have not prayed, they have prayed. Yeah. It's not that God has not told them, God has told them to what to do. Yes. But the first, just making that first step yeah. is a mountain to them. And they end up procrastinating and time is passing. Yeah. Time is just passing. Time is just passing. And then they end up blaming God. You see, once you neglect the place of action, mm -hmm. you have broken a superior principle mm -hmm. that guides life. Yeah. Because the place of acting mm -hmm. cannot be replaced. Yes. You can't replace action. 
That is a principle. You can't pre re replace it. If you do not take action mm -hmm. on whatsoever plan you have, it remains as it is, a dream yeah. in your night vision. It's like someone who is dreaming that they are eating. Mm -hmm. If they wake up out of their dream, mm -hmm. they, will have, they will still be hungry physically. Yes. So when we do not take action mm. on what we have heard even from God, mm -hmm. nothing works. True. It is just as simple as that. You either act, mm -hmm. get results, mm -hmm. you, don't. you don't act, you continue living in what we would call wishful thinking. Wishful thinking. Hoping, Hoping for things which are not there. So decision is very key. Critical. But, ha okay, now, someone, for example, you know, people, I've seen people who have... Uh, started business yeah. and they will tell you god gave me this particular idea yeah i implemented this idea and uh somehow that idea never bore fruit and now when they get another idea yeah. they're kind of scared it's what is called once beaten twice shy yeah so they they go back into the comfort zone yeah. they don't want to risk anymore yeah maybe they lost money it has happened to me several times yeah uh you you do something feeling that uh getting the impression completely yeah. that this thing will work. Yeah. And then you prayed, you waited on God, and everything looked okay. Yeah. But kaboom, it didn't work. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. How, how do you get back again on your feet yes. to do something new? I would relate that to driving. Mm. Uh, I think it will give us an example. You see, when you're driving, especially the manual vehicles, mm -hmm. these were the clutch and the, and the brake and the fuel. And the fuel yeah. So someone who are, who's uh, afraid is like driving with your brakes on. So you put your foot on the brake <laughs> and you're pressing the fuel. So the vehicle will be producing sound. And consuming fuel. And consuming fuel. And not moving. And it's not moving. And there's a probability that that vehicle <laughs> may end up, end up getting spoiled. Uh -huh. So in terms of the element of risk, there has to be a degree at which you accept mm -hmm. that some things can happen. And is it okay, uh, a person of faith, to make, l like to, you're in business, yes, you got the word and everything, is it okay for someone who has faith and maybe who is a kingdom person yes. to, to lose or maybe make wrong decision? Because now we are conditioned in a way that we cannot lose. Victory is our portion. Yeah. Overcoming, you are the head, <laughs> not the tail. So, <laughs> so when you get in that, Scenario. <laughs> Scenario. <laughs> Where you have lost. And it leads to the first question that I asked. Yeah. But you, you're just there. You're yes. accelerating, the brakes are on, yes. the vehicle is not moving. But the experience. Yes, makes you continue pressing your brake. You just want to stay there. Yeah. Uh, losing, uh, I think, is a reality. Yes. You can, sometimes people lose. Mm. It's just like we are on this earth. People die. Yes. Even Christians die. At some point, mm -hmm. you can hear an accident has happened and one believer has died. So mm -hmm. these are realities of life. Yes. It's like uh, thinking that you can't die. Mm -hmm. Death is a reality. Mm -hmm. So in the equation of success, there are elements which we would call uh, uh, the wisdom of the street. Mm -hmm. On the ground, realities on the ground. Yes. Where you are dealing with other human beings. Mm -hmm. If you quote a wrong price, you will lose, okay? So you see, your decision is also uh, involving other decisions. Yes. There are other players involved. If you are a, a seller, mm -hmm. there is a buyer. Mm -hmm. The buyer wants to use the minimal uh, cash as cash much as possible. To get the product. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And the seller wants to get make as much as possible. Profit. Yes. Mm -hmm. However, there is a point that these two people converge. Yes. So at that point when the decision is made, mm -hmm. if you consider other factors, you mm -hmm. may find maybe the decision you made at that time mm -hmm. has resulted into a loss. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean that it's the end of the road mm -hmm. because those are the dynamics of life. Yes. That's why the wise man says there is a time to plant, the, as in there is time for everything. Mm -hmm. So there, is a, there are moments when we once may lose, yes. but it doesn't mean mm -hmm. That is the end of the road. Yes. So that is now where our faith power comes in. Mm -hmm. Then where you say, though I have been beaten once, I will <laughs> not be twice shy. 
yeah. where you say I may fall down once, uh -huh. but I will but rise. rise again. I have uh, seven more opportunities mm -hmm. to rise again. So I think it's the principle, it, it's reality that mm -hmm. we don't die on the first mm -hmm. shot when we are on the ground. <laughs> There's an aspect you've introduced. Yeah. I'll go to a short break and then we'll come back. But yeah. there's an aspect. I want you to hold on the thought that uh, you say that uh, faith, uh, faith, the relationship between faith and knowledge, because yeah. faith is not presumptuous. You don't yeah. just say, I will go this way by faith without having a word that backs that direction you're taking. Correct. So we'll come back to that. Oh, okay. Faith is not presumptuous. Yes. You must back it up with knowledge. Very true. When you're dealing matters business. Correct. Okay, uh, we're going to have a short break and then we'll be back just to continue engaging more. I believe you're being blessed and also you're getting to learn a few things. Amen. See you in a short while.